Hey, welcome to another episode here on Ruach Exposure. Ruach Exposure, where we meet every need of the Holy Spirit. We trust that the Holy Spirit moves in our messages and will touch you listening on the other side, my friend. The next video I've got here is Alfred, where he's going to share a little testimony with you guys. Enjoy. God bless. Yeah, so... Uh... <clears throat> You know, we go out evangelizing on Saturday mornings. Uh, it's one of the things that Esther has arranged. So I'm going to use some names now. Um, Renette, you know Renette that um, has a ministry which uh, we don't really uh, disclose. So um, she's very seasoned with evangelism. Esther is very fired up. And then we have other people that we invite. And we go out uh, to warmer location, Ninth Avenue warmer. We go to the beachfront or Bay World or wherever the Spirit leads. And before we go, we pray uh, for God incidences, for God appointments. We don't believe in coincidences. So um, we find that, you know, when, when you go out to, to do God's work, the Bible says he has prepared good works for us to walk in before the world began. He's done all of that. He has uh, foreordained us because he foreknew everything. And so he's planned our lives out. When we're walking in obedience with him, there are a whole number of things which are going to happen. That God always has uh, prepared. So when we go out to evangelize, we pray along those lines. We pray according to scripture. Because the Bible says you pray according to scripture, you know that, that you have the thing that you've prayed for. So we pray that God will lead us to the lost sheep. That one out of a hundred, leaving the ninety-nine, that Jesus will go and find because it's lost. It's a precious sheep. He died for that sheep. So we go and look for them. We pray that God will lead us to them and God will lead them to us. And all the other things. So I was praying the night before and I just felt God saying, uh, you know, that not every... Thing that he's going to orchestrate for the day involves uh, bringing a soul to Christ but it's something to do with the kingdom of God that's important so anyway the next morning before we went out we got together and prayed we went down to the beachfront and on the way there Annette was telling me about somebody who had uh, uh, she was in contact with a, a missionary guy who was in fact writing his own tracts and she mentioned a name and so on and that he was part of possibly, uh, I think, uh, a Dutch Reformed Church. So anyway, we, we just because we were talking about tracks, she mentioned this. So we went to the beachfront and we had a little envelope to deliver to a certain person. We went straight to where that person would be. Uh, the person that's actually looking after him was there running a big stall. His, his wife is in our church. We gave the envelope to him and there was a guy standing behind me and he looked a bit agitated. He had black pants on, black shoes, and a white kind of a dress shirt. <clears throat> so I asked him if he was looking for someone, and he said, yes, he's looking for his wife and his children. And uh, he said, what are we doing? I said, well, we're evangelizing. So he said, oh, that's very nice. He, he also does a bit of evangelism. In fact, he writes his own tracts. So anyway... Um, I turned back to what we were doing, but this guy was like a magnet. I had to turn back and talk to him. So I was talking to him and, and um, he explained to me a few things about the, the, what he was. He mentioned his name and that he was from uh, a certain church, but he's new in PE and he's not even sure of the name of the church or the address because he's so new here. He's coming like on a mission. And when he said his name, that just made me amazed because Renette had never met the person she was talking about before but she mentioned his name and that he writes tracts and this guy had the same name and he writes tracts too and he's from an Afrikaans church so Renette had wandered off to find some sheep or some fish and off I went after her and I said Renette what was that guy's name again and I said you know what there's a guy with that name right over there who writes tracts <laughs> and we went back and we spoke to this guy and it turned out to be the very guy that she was talking about she'd never met him before but there he was the first guy that we spoke to on the beachfront that's before. how the holy spirit works eh? that's how the holy spirit leads and when you pray these things you must trust it's going to happen and it 
happens every time. There were two other God incidences that stood out on that day, or even three um, last Saturday morning. But there were plenty of other connections, there were plenty of other contacts, and every one of them was designed by God. I've no doubt. I've no doubt. Uh, if we didn't come home with a bag full of souls, we surely came home with empty, empty seed bags. We put out all the seed that we could. And God is going to use all of that because the one man plants. And the time goes by and that seed is in the ground. And others are watering it, watering it. And the day that that seed comes up and God makes it to grow, He might be so gracious as just to let you know. Are you bumping into that person? And it's happened to me before where a person has said, do you remember me? And I'll go like, no. <laughs> well, uh, remind me. And they'll say, no, I was uh, so-and-so, and you spoke to me on this day and that day, and then they go, I'm a pastor now. you know. And that just blows you right off your feet because <laughs> you forgot what you did. You didn't think it was worth much or anything. But God, once you've planted a seed from Him, He's busy with that seed. And he's not going to leave it alone until it has come to fruition and become the thing that he wants it to do. And all this is the work of the Holy Spirit working in the church with us. Without that, we wouldn't have the power to be his witnesses. We just wouldn't be able to do it. So we wouldn't have the leading of the Holy Spirit. We wouldn't have the unction of the Holy Spirit when we speak. We wouldn't have the, the, the understanding, the mind of Christ to realize what's going on so that we can testify about that. And other people then can be convicted by that testimony that God is alive and working amongst us.